Encouraging discussion is no less important in a virtual classroom setting than it is in a face-to-face -face classroom. In fact, some research suggests that students who tend to be reluctant to speak up in class often have a greater opportunity to participate in online discussion. To add a discussion form, click on Add an Activity or Resource. It shows several activities, as well as several different resources that can be added. Files, web pages, URLs, or website links. In this case, we want to add a form, and it's already been selected. On the right-hand pane, note that it gives you a brief description of the activity. It talks about the types of forms, the options as far as postings and subscriptions. Select Add. Insert a form name. And in this case, I'm just going to call it a test form and a description. This is only a test. And I always select Display Description on the course page because I want the participants to always know exactly which form they're viewing. Next, select the type of form. There's several things to choose from. A single simple discussion is something that you would generally use if you're posting a discussion question for your students to respond to. There are several other choices there. The standard form for general use is most likely or most closely resembles face-to-face -face discussion, which means that a conversation is started and then it just automatically flows to a new topic or a new discussion, et cetera. So it is not necessarily restricted to a particular discussion topic. In this case, the standard form is good for what we're trying to do here. So I'll leave that selected. That's the default setting. Note that help is always available. Right here with this question mark, this is help with form type. Click on it, and it shows you the different types of form. So you can use this as you make your decision. There's each person posts one discussion. Each student can post exactly one new discussion topic, which everyone can then reply to. And then there's the Q&A form. Students must first post their perspectives before viewing other students' posts. So this is just something to help you make your decisions. Here's some options regarding attachments. You have the option to not allow any to be uploaded at all. That means you don't want them to upload any images or media files. In this case, I do. And I think limiting the size to one megabyte is fine. The maximum number of attachments, I think no more than four should be fine. I don't want to do anything with displaying word count because I'm not concerned with words. I'm strictly concerned with promoting virtual discussion. There's several options regarding subscriptions. The subscription to the form can be optional, forced, auto, or completely disabled. In most cases, when there is a discussion topic posted to a form that is mandatory for students to respond to, I select auto subscription, which means they're automatically subscribed to the form, but they have the option to opt out of it. In other words, they may not feel that they need email updates as far as new postings. They can simply go into the form and look at the activity that's going on. In this case, I want to leave it as optional because it's not a mandatory discussion form. As far as read tracking, I generally turn it on just so that I have that added assistance of having some kind of indicator that I have read different postings. Depending upon how many people are participating at any given time, it can get overwhelming and you can lose track of where you were in the discussion 
postings. I don't want to do anything regarding RSS feeds. As far as posting thresholds, I don't want to limit anything that the participants are doing, but it is an option that's available if you see that one or two people are dominating the discussion. You may decide to limit the number of postings in a certain number of days. But in this case, I'm encouraging discussion, so that's not an option that I want to take advantage of. There's no grades or ratings connected up with this posting, so I don't want to look at those options at this time. As far as the module settings, I do want it to be visible, and I'm not doing anything with groups, so I don't need to select any options there. I don't want to restrict access, but if you do want that option, you would select a particular date that this discussion forum would be visible, and a particular date, maybe five or 10 days later, that you wanted the dis discussion section to no longer be visible. There's also the options of making a, the discussion posting visible based upon a previous performance or per previous task or assignment. In this case, you might want to say that only if they completed building a virtual learning environment assignment and received at least a grade of 75% would this particular discussion form be available to them. So this allows you to restrict access until students or participants have demonstrated a particular level of competency. In this case, I don't want to do anything with limiting access. So I'll remove that option and then select save and display. And this displays the new discussion form and gives me the option to add a new discussion topic. So the form is more like a category, something that you can use for organizational purposes. And then you want to add your discussion topics to that form. Click on add a new discussion topic and enter a subject. I'm gonna add a topic, virtual discussion. pros and cons. And then in the message area, I want to add a brief description of what I want the participants to do. In this case, list either a positive or negative consequence of virtual discussion. Okay, I have the option here to add an attachment. I might want to add a research paper that's discussing some of the positives and negatives associated with allowing students to participate in virtual discussion. Or I might want to add a media file or an image and then just select post to form. It gives me the message that my post has been added successfully And now it's available for other people to comment on. One final point, a lot of instructors seem to shy away from contributing to virtual discussions, but I'd like you to consider the following question. Would it make a noticeable difference in your face-to-face -face classroom if you never contributed to the in-class discussion? If that seems unacceptable behavior in a face-to-face -face classroom, it's probably also not best practice for a virtual classroom. 